Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Into the 99. I'm already starting off by not being able to talk. Um, I am one of your hosts, Daniel. Uh, Zach's not with us this week, so everyone make sure you say a quick hello to Zach. Zach, we miss you, but he's got some other things to do. Um, on this week's episode, Slothy and I are going to talk about one of Slothy's awesome decks. I've said so many times that I really, really like how Slothy builds. So I, I just want to get right into it because he builds so different than Zach and I, and it's going to be just an awesome thing. So first and foremost, Slothy, how are you doing this week? Oh, I'm pretty good, thanks. Uh, weather's finally not terrible, so... Oh, we, uh, yeah, Slothy and I are both yeah. from the same spot. And yeah, the uh, w I had like a straight week of rain, nonstop rain, <clears throat> the, the whole time, like it was pouring down. I live like really close to a large river in our city flood warnings all that stuff it's been it's been a good time really good time oh yeah so yeah, yeah it's, but... it's nice that it's not thunderstorming and raining and blowing me all over yeah. the road yeah it's a good time <laughs> yeah how are, you, how are you doing uh, i've been really good like i said it was uh it was a busy week and everything i mm. did some family stuff yesterday one of my brothers officially did his grad stuff for uh massage therapy he's a registered massage therapist now which is cool so we nice. went yeah went and did that um didn't end up getting any games in and stuff, and then just took the took the rest of the weekend to relax. So it wasn't too too bad. A uh, nice nice end to a busy week. But yeah, I was soaking wet all week with everything. Oh yeah, yeah. I was in like shin deep water at some points of the week. It was not a great time. Gross. Yeah. Um. Wow. Anyways, speaking <laughs> speaking <laughs> kind of of water. What's uh yeah. What's your deck about? So uh, this is uh Captain Gothrod mill deck. Um. So Captain Gothrod is one of the new he is the face commander for one of the precons from Baldur's Gate, and he is a three blue and a black for a three six horror pirate. Uh, horrors you control have menace. Whenever a horror you control deals combat damage to a player, that player mills that many cards. And at the beginning of your end step, choose target artifact or creature card in an opponent's graveyard that was put there from their library this turn and put it onto the battlefield under your control. As soon as this commander was spoiled, I'm pretty sure I said, I want this one. Yeah. Well, it's got such a generally with something like this, you you have instead stapled on, right? That they do that they mill it instead, but this is not instead. They're still taking damage. They're still losing a lot of cards from their deck. Your commander alone is three cards top deck. Um, I I I wish it let you just play things from it in general, yeah. Like lands, that would be cool. But the fact that you can just put something onto the battlefield, like you can get some some pretty big cards with that ability off and. That, that that deck was horror themed, I assume. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So I I didn't look at yeah. any of the pre con spoilers this time. There's too many pre cons. I'm not buying all of them. <laughs> enough. Well, enough. You don't want, yeah. You don't want 25 pre cons a year. That's that's a lot of pre cons. It's uh, that might be <laughs> less than we get. As as bad as it is. Yeah. No yeah. this this one out of all the ones that I did see, especially the face commanders, this was probably the most interesting one. I thought. Because what were the face commanders, quickly? It was this one, the party one, which, eh. Yeah. Um, then they had the they had the party one, which I was, like, unimpressed with. They had the Gruul from Exile one. Oh, and then they had, like, the Is It Goad deck kind of thing. Mm. That one looked, like, okay, but they, I don't know, just leave Goad in one one or two color pairings. Not everything needs Goad. This, this was the most interesting one, so I'm excited oh. to see what you've done with it. I assume this isn't the pre-con deck and that you've made your own uh, yeah yeah i kind of took the pre-con took everything out of it except for a couple things yeah well let's let's jump right into it the fact that you can get their artifacts too is awesome let's jump let's yeah. jump right into it where do you want to start with your list here um let's start out with the artifacts because it's mostly ramp but just kind of get that out of the way okay um first one is uh coalition relic uh, three mana artifact, tap to add one mana of any color. You can tap it to put a charge counter on it. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, remove all charge counters from it and add one mana of any color for each charge counter removed. Yeah, it's a good one. Uh, the yeah. next next one you have too is Codex Shredder. I really like top deck control in general. I love mm -hmm. when people, it's one of my favorite things in like competitive play, especially when people tutor something to the top at end step and then you just tap and mill them away. So Codex Shredder is awesome. Um, one mana, target player, tap target player, mills a card, and five, sack it, return target card from your graveyard to your hand, which is great. Yeah. Uh, then we've got Commander Sphere, um, another three mana rock. You can tap to add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity, and you can sack it to draw a card. Good early game to get some some mana out there, and then when you don't need it, just 
exchange it for something new. Yeah, exactly. Late game, it's it's mana that you can use the mana for and then throw away for a draw. It's not horrible. We've got Demir yeah. Signet, just general good ramp for decks. Two mana, one in a tap to add one one black, one blue. Yeah. Um, then we've got... There we go. A grind Clock. Two mana artifact. Tap it to put a charge counter on it, or you can tap it. Target player puts the top X cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard, where X is the number of charge counters on Grind Clock. This is such a good card. Yep. This, really like uh, this, this especially with an unwinding clock, just gets out of hand so quickly. Mm-hmm. I uh, I love Grind Clock, and I, I, I run it in a few Proliferate decks, and it's it, it gets results for sure. So this is an awesome one. If you're trying to mill them out as well, because... That that is the other thing, right? Not only are you taking their spells, you also can just mill them. Absolutely. Yeah, they they can also just lose their de- their deck. That is a real <laughs> way people lose the game. Yep. Yeah. So like mill mill already by itself is a good is a good strategy. I think generally speaking, you've got a target at one person, or you get focused by everyone. But this yeah. this letting you bring things back, you've got more things to block. Like you've got chump blocker creatures. I I just I think that this is a, and especially. You're potentially getting three creatures a turn, is that right? Yeah, choose an artifact. Uh, oh, only yeah. one, only one. Er, yeah, and an opponent's graveyard. Okay, not not each opponent. That would have been that would have been silly, but still, oh, there even, are ways even... to make that happen. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> so yeah, we'll we'll jump back into the rest of them. We've got lightning greaves. Obviously, you're gonna have to protect this commander. It's gonna get hurt. Yep. Um, then we got maskwood nexus. Um, four mana. Creatures you control are every creature type. Same is true for creature spells you control and creature cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. Tap three and tap it to create a 2-2 blue shapeshifter. Awesome card. Yeah. It's horrors, or not horrors, um, menace is already hard to deal with, so mm. just swamp them out. Yeah. Just, oh, well, yeah. Uh, this gives all your horrors menace, yes. Mm-hmm. Horrors you control have menace. So yeah, you can just, you have a generator as well. You've got a lot of ramp in here too. Mm-hmm. So you've got, yeah, I, I really like this inclusion, especially making your shapeshifters. You've got Minecraft yeah. as well, which is a really hard card and a lot of decks to deal with. Uh, if, if you're not holding removal in hand the turn this comes down, it, it hurts generally. Minecraft is two mana for an artifact. Whenever a player, whenever an opponent loses life, that player mills that many cards. And I really like that it's loss of life, not just damage. Yeah. Loss of life is hard to get around. Yep. And this is actually one of the, the main win cons in the deck. Um, is uh, oh. Minecraft? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll tell you why when we get to it. But next is Skyclave Relic, uh, three mana artifact with indestructible. It's got kicker for three. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, create two tap tokens that are copies of it, and you can tap tap one mana of any color. I love this card. I think it's yep. great early, and I think it's great like mid tier when you want to ramp harder. Absolutely. And uh, especially in token decks, like I, I just I like everything about Skyclave Relic. You've got your normal soul ring as well, which is I'm not even going to read. You have Stryonic Resonator, which is great in this deck. Two mana, artifact, tap. Uh, it's two and a tap, copy target, triggered ability you control. You can choose new targets. So again, you get your second trigger out, which is rough. Yep. Um, then we've got sort of the Animist uh, card. I, I just love this one. Uh, two mana, legendary artifact equipment. Equip creatures plus one, plus one. And whenever equipped creature attacks, you may search your library... For a basic land card, put it on the battlefield tapped and then shuffle, and it's got equipped for two. That is a great card. Yeah, it's it's kind of one of my... It's probably my favorite sword, I think, actually. Mm, mine's Hearth and Home, for sure. Yeah, fair enough. I'm a simple man, and that art's beautiful. <laughs> We've got Talisman oh, yeah. of Dominance, two mana. It can tap to add a colorless, or tap to add one blue or one black and one damage to you. Yeah. Then there is Thran Dynamo, uh, four mana, tap to add three. Yep. Yeah. Good card, and then obviously a Whisper Soak Cloak is great in this deck. Three mana, equip creatures unblockable, and equip creature has Shroud with equip two. That's awesome for every part of the deck that you want. Yeah. Um, I assume you want to do creatures last. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, let's go over to... Let's do enchantments. All right. Oh, I love this first one. I, I want to take this one. I, yeah. I bought every one of these that I could find. Endless Evil is two and a blue. Uh, it's enchant aura, enchant creature you control. At the beginning of your upkeep, create a token that's a copy of enchanted creature, except the token is a 1-1. One, one. Whenever it dies, if that creature is a horror, return endless evil to its owner's hand. This is awesome just in any deck that wants to make tokens of important creatures. But that that being said, the fact that this comes back with horrors is so good in this deck. Yeah. It's it's just, especially at 2 and a blue, it's such a good, such a good card. I really, really like that card a lot. 
yeah, it's yeah, it, it's mean. It can be mean. Um, then we've got Phyrexian Arena, one double black. At the beginning of your upkeep, draw a card and lose a life. I just generally like the black draw a card, lose a life. I, I'm not above pay, I'm not above throwing my life away to uh yeah. to get some card draw. Like I, I think it's like a good way of looking at card draw in general. Exactly. Like you got you got forty life. You can, you're fine. Yeah, it's definitely different in different formats, right? But forty life is mm-hmm. a lot. Losing oh, one like. Totally. A commander game that went 40 turns, I would think, is a crazy commander game. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, that's insane. Uh, you've also got Reflections of Lidajara, or Lajara, which I really like this card a lot. I love Tribal and stuff. It's probably my third place after ETB and Landfall. <laughs> but it's oh, four yeah. and a blue, which is great cost and great colors. They can slot into a lot. Uh, as it enters, you choose a creature type, and whenever you cast a spell of the chosen type, copy that spell, which is awesome. Yeah. It's uh, doubling up your horrors as an enchantment is wicked, and then with your mask wood nexus, everything is a horror. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love reflections mm-hmm. of the jar. It's it's just a great card overall. Yeah, it's it was one of my favorites from that set. The uh, the artwork on the next one is is starting to grow on me too. I'll let you take it, but yeah, uh, the next one is Ristic Study. Um, two and a blue. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, you may draw a card unless that player plays player pays one. Um, the art that he's talking about is the Unstable Harmonics art, which is awesome. Yeah, I just think it looks really cool. Mm-hmm. I like it. Uh, eh, I really like the normal one, too, but I, I like yeah. this art a lot. Work. It's it's really nice. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You want to do Sorceries next? Yeah. Um, yeah, I just really like the first one. We've got uh, the first is Cut Your Losses. Four double blue, and it's got Casualty, too. Uh, as you cast it... Uh, you can sack a creature with power two or greater when you do copy it, and you can choose new targets. And its target player mills half their library round it down. This is just an awesome card overall. Yeah. The the fact that you can throw away something small, especially even if it's one of their creatures, is awesome. And does your commander it doesn't care how it was put in the grave, right? Uh, it has to be from the library. No, no, but that's what I mean, right? Like, if you mill it, it, it doesn't have to be from the oh. horrors. Oh, no, no. Yeah, so if you mill half my deck, you basically just get to look through half my deck for an artifact or creature. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, so any uh, of any of those things that make you mill down is rough. Yeah. It's just a better traumatize. Um, then we've got Feed the Swarm. Uh, one in a black, destroy target creature or enchantment or pony controls. You lose life equal to that permanence mana value. Yeah. Yeah, plain and simple. I like this too. Fractured Sanity, triple blue. Each opponent mills 14 cards. And it has cycling, one in a blue, discard a draw card, and when you cycle it, each opponent mills four cards. It's just great all around. Absolutely. Next is rough. Then, yeah. Yep. The next one uh, is Maddening Cacophony, one in a blue. For a, uh, each opponent mills eight cards if this spell was kicked. Instead, each opponent mills half their library rounded up, and its uh, kicker cost is three in a blue. Yeah, so for six, again, everyone mills half their library rounded up is rough. Yep. Rough. And then Windfall, just a card I love in every deck I can put it in. Like, it's, I understand that it was maybe problematic with, like, a Hole Breacher kind of thing, but I still like mm. it. Uh, oh, yeah. Two and a blue. Each player discards their hand, then draws cards equal to the greatest number of cards a player discarded this way. Number one, I personally think this is a great politics card. It, it can really help out people who are stalling out and need to get to something else. It can also really, really be used offensively if you know someone's got good stuff in hand or they're, like, getting rid of stuff, and then in this deck as well, like when you're throwing stuff to the grave, you're, the things people have kept are now in the grave for you to look through as well. I, I like I like the inclusion in the deck, and I just like Windfall. Yeah, Windfall's pretty decent. It's a shame that there's no Hull Breacher, but you know, we won't talk about that one. I honestly didn't think Hull Breacher was that problematic. Like the, no. It was annoying to lose your hand and stuff, but like I also don't think Leovold's problematic. I also think people should just build Leovold. And shouldn't yeah. listen to the ban list. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, do what's fun. Do what's fun for your play group. If your play group likes Leovold, the artwork for Leovold's cool and it's got a cool effect. What do you guys want me to say? Yeah. I have Leovold. Yeah, I got much. too I have too many illegal commander decks. At a certain point, someone's gonna have to be like, <laughs> stop. <laughs> um yeah. yeah, we'll jump into your instance because I know you want to do those ones last. Um actually let's do yeah. quickly do your lands because you have sure. at least one or two in here that I think are important. Number one is Rogue's Passage. You can't not have Rogue's Passage when you want to bonk people. Yep. It's just too good. Uh, and also, I like the uh, Urborg. I don't know if you use Urborg for something or you just like Urborg. I, I just really like it. I pulled 
like three or four when Time Spell Remastered came out. Urborg is just a great card. And, I also yeah. like it. It kind of fixes your colors for you, and I assume with the horrors you've got a lot of black. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's a. Uh, I don't know. I, I just want to talk Rogue's Passage because you gotta you have to bonk people with that. You also have uh, Path of Ancestry, which is really good in a deck like this. Yep. The any color and the scry is is definitely not bad. <clears throat> No, yeah. not at all. All right. And then into your instance, okay. we've got like Brainstorm, which is great early game, great late game. Draw three cards, mm -hmm. put two from your hand on top of your library in any order. That's awesome. Yeah. Then we got um, Counter Spell, two blue, Counter Target Spell. Yeah. Hurts. Yeah. Uh, Dark Ritual, really good early ramp. One uh, black mana to add triple black. Yep. Then oh, uh, I didn't... like this one a lot. Yeah, this is one of my favorite Counter Spells. Um, didn't say please. One double blue, Counter Target Spell. It's Controller puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard. Yeah, that's that's always good. Yeah. Just gives you more more chances to hit an artifact or creature. Flavor tech's so funny. If you're in our home, we expect you to mind your manners. <laughs> it's it's such a rough counterspell to be hit by. Just, hey, you didn't say please. No. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You also have Drown in the Lock, one black, one blue. Uh, choose one. Counter target spell with mana value less than or equal to the number of cards in its controller's graveyard. Or destroy target creature with a mana value less than or equal to the number of cards in its controller's graveyard. In a mill deck, that's pretty easy. Oh, absolutely. Pretty easy math. Yeah. Is, is this creature's mana value less than half your deck? Okay, it's dead now. If it's not less than half the deck, it's a real problem. Yeah. Um, then we got Fierce Guardianship. Uh, two and a blue. Um, you won't be paying two and a blue for it. Mm -hmm. If you control a commander, you may cast a spell without paying its mana cost and counter target non-creature spell. Great card. A card that really should have been reprinted in the Commander Legends stuff. I think all of that cycle should have been. Absolutely. It's really good. Uh, the The new Double Master stuff just seems like it was for the Commander players anyways. Like, they're putting everything Commander-related in that. Yep. So hopefully those are there. I uh, I like what? these. I, the only thing that's bad about them is their price. Their price is nuts, and it should be because they're mm -hmm. great cards, and they were only available in, like, one spot. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing as, like, uh, Dockside. Yeah. Which is finally getting a reprint, which is also great. Yep. You've got Very Infernal happy. Grasp, which is weird artwork. I really, really like this one. Uh, it's one and a black for an instant. Destroy target creature, you lose two life. Really simple. I really like it, and I just really like that artwork. I, have not, I haven't seen this one used in a deck before. Yeah. Um, then we've got Perplex. One blue and a black. Counter target spell, unless its controller discards his or her hand. And it's got Transmute for one blue and a black. So you could discard it and search your library for a card with the same CMC as that card, um, which is three. Reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. That's great because that can get you, uh, that can get you a windfall. That can get you a fractured sanity, a whisper silk cloak. Like that can get you a lot of great stuff in this deck. Yeah, that's uh, transmute. Such a cool thing. We've got Pongify, one blue, instant destroy target creature. Can't be regen. Its controller creates a three three green ape. Pongify is great. Absolutely. Uh, then there's pull, f pull from Tomorrow, X double blue, draw X cards, then discard a card. Mm -hmm. Rapid hybridization, yeah. again, more, a little bit more control and destroy. Uh, one blue, destroy target creature, can't be regenerated. That creature's controller creates a 3-3 three, three green frog lizard token. Good card. Yep. Yeah. Then there is Spoils of Blood, uh, single black. Put an XX black horror creature token onto the battlefield where X is the number of creatures that died this turn. That can be really rough if somebody tries to board wipe you out of being a problem. Mm -hmm. You now have a twenty twenty, Exactly. At instant speed, that's rough. And then we've got good old Vampiric Tutor to end it off. We've got one black, search your library for a card, then shuffle your library, put it on top, you lose two life. Again, that top deck control I was talking about. Yeah. It, it works. Yeah, no, so I, I really like this list that you've got going so far. Like, I know we've kind of ripped through it, but we've got a lot of creatures to get through, and I assume you want to talk about some of them? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we've got... Uh, oh, yeah. We've got 30 creatures in this creature section, and I'll, yeah, let, I'll let you start us right off. That's one thing. This, is, this deck was kind of weird, because usually that's more than double the amount of creatures I usually play. This is all creatures but, for you? Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, you jump right into them. Oh, yeah. So first we got a Fedo Alchemist, uh, one in a blue for a 1-2 wizard. Tap to untap target artifact or creature, and it's got morph for a blue. Good card. Yeah. You have Brain Stealer Dragon, which is such weird artwork. I said it when I first saw it, and I love it. <laughs> uh, we've got five double black for a Dragon Horror, six six flyer. Good stats. At the beginning of your end step, exile the top card of each opponent's library. You may play those cards for as long as they remain to exile. 
you cast a spell this way, you may spend mana as though or mana of any color to cast it. Whenever a non-land permanent opponent owns, enters the battlefield under your control, they lose life equal to its mana value. That's so good for this deck. Yep. Non-land permanent opponent. Yep. It's rough. Especially if you, like, hit something, like, just massive. Like, if I have, like, for some reason I've got an imprevious Great Worm that you hit me with, that's going to really sting. Yep. Oh, yeah. But there's also a lot of really big artifacts that you're seeing a lot of lately and stuff. Like, I, I've seen a lot of, like, increase in, like, Planar Bridge to, like, go tutor things out. Mm-hmm. There's there's some yeah. big things to get hurt with. Oh, yeah. Speaking of getting hurt, the next one. <laughs> this is one of the things that... Uh, that you transmute, trans- yeah. If you transmute, you go get. This is Bruvac the Grandiloquent. Two and a blue. Legendary creature, human advisor, one four. If an opponent would mill one or more cards, they mill twice that many cards instead. Bruvac's nuts. Mm-hmm. I also I, love the flavor text, and furthermore, <laughs> yeah, I, I built this one as a petitioner's deck when it was first released, and yeah, that was mono blue Bruvac. Like, brutal. is is rough. Yeah, you got Changeling Outcast, which is just a great card for any tribal matters deck. Uh, it's one black for a one one Changeling. Can't block and can't be blocked, so it's it's getting through. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. It's getting through and milling them at least one every turn. This next one is really interesting as a horror as well, too. I mean, it looks like a horror, and its ability is horrific, so it makes sense, but it's it's good. Yeah. Um, this is Chasm Skulker, two and a blue for a 1-1 one, one squid horror. Whenever you draw a card, put a plus one plus one counter on Chasm Skulker. And when Chasm Skulker dies, create X-1-1 one, one blue squid creature tokens with Island Walk, where X is the number of 1-1 one, one counters on Chasm Skulker. It can't be blocked as long as controlling player defenses, or defending player controls an island. I've never noticed that they have Island Walk a single time. Yeah, that just makes them even more brutal. It's really good. It's really mm-hmm. good. Blue's in a lot of decks. I, I've just always thought it makes squid tokens, which is also really good. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's solid. You have Consuming Aberration, which is also really, really strong in any deck like this. Three, one blue, one black. Uh, it's Star Star Horror. Its power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in your opponent's graveyard, which is big in a mill deck. Whenever you cast a spell, each opponent reveals from the top of their library until they reveal a land and puts those into their graveyard. This is awesome with everything you're doing. It's pumping this guy, it's getting them closer to death, and it's getting more in the graveyard for you to choose with your commander. Yeah. A, a deck like this, like, uh, I, I, I like decks like this because you're, it's going to function very rough if the commander's not on the field. You, you still have a lot of control, a lot of destroy. And a lot of, like, big horrors. Like, Consuming Apparition isn't only good if the commander's out. Yeah. But just your commander gives all of these cards such another, like, threat and toolbox on top of them. And I really, really like decks that function this way. Yeah. Yeah, I like that card a lot. Um, <laughs> uh, next up, we've got Dusk Mantle Guild Mage. Uh, blue and a black for a 2-2 human wizard. It can tap one blue and a black whenever a card is put into a graveyard, or an opponent's graveyard from anywhere this turn, that player loses one life. Or two, a blue and a black. Target player puts the top two cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. That's pretty cool. This, car- this card goes infinite with um, Mind Creek. Oh, yeah. Whenever a card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere they lose a life, whenever they lose a life, they put a card in the graveyard. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's a nice, nice infinite. Nice yeah. four mana infinite, too. Yeah. That you yeah, can also one... start from here. Yeah, it's, it's really easy. <laughs> To make that go off. I like cool interactions. Yeah. I also like this one. It's Grazalax, uh, the Illithid Scholar. One double blue for a 3-2 horror. Whenever a creature you control becomes blocked, you may return it to its owner's hand, which is great protection. And whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, draw a card. It's, it's just really good, and especially all of your horrors having menace. It wastes two of their blockers, and you, they don't even get to kill it. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Next one I've never seen. Uh, the next one is uh, Grell Philosopher, two and a blue for a one four uh, horror wizard with uh, aberrant tinkering. When uh, Grell Philosopher enters the battlefield, and at the beginning of your upkeep, each horror you control gains all activated abilities of target artifact and opponent controls until end of turn. You may spend blue mana as or mana of any color to activate those abilities. Gains all activated it's... abilities of target artifact and opponent controls. So all of your horrors can just become like soul rings if you wanted, for instance. Yep, that's pretty good. I play Temple Bell in, like, every deck. You now have 30 Temple Bells? <laughs> I don't like that. Nope. And it's when it enters the battlefield. That's really cool. Is that from the uh, from the deck itself? Uh, yes. 
Okay. Yeah, that's the only printing for it. I uh, I like that card a lot. I'm going to have to find one of those. It's not even yeah. an expensive card. 50 cent card. That was really cool. Mm-hmm. You also have uh, Guilt Feeder. Three double blue. Yeah. Or three double black. Sorry, I don't know why I can't read. Uh, it's a zero four 4 horror with fear. Whenever it attacks and isn't blocked, defending player loses one card for each life in their graveyard. Wow. That's rough. That's Yeah, yeah it's a good way to just kind of kill people. Again, is that from this deck? Like the, the yeah. pre-con? I might buy this precon now, seeing some of these. They look pretty cool. Yeah, the precon was actually really decent. Does it have one of the next cards in it, too? Because that'll seal the deal. It does, absolutely. I, yeah, I'm going um, to buy this one later today, I think. Uh, the next one in question is Holebreaker Horror. Uh, five double blue for a 7-8 Kraken Horror with Flash, and it can't be countered. Uh, whenever you cast a spell, choose up to one. Uh, return target spell you don't control to its owner's hand, or return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Such a strong card. Mm-hmm. So good. It being a horror is so good. But just yeah. it, it making all of your instants immediately things that can like bounce. I wish this was a legendary creature because it would have been so fun to build a control deck around this monstrosity. I mean, it hasn't stopped you before. Yeah, but this one I think <laughs> might be a little too silly. Yeah, fair enough. I think I think it's a really, really good card though. It's it's actually one of the ones I enjoyed the most from that whole set. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it just it's got so many good things. Whenever you cast a spell, choose up to one. Return target spell. Oh, so good. Or target non-land permanent. Such a good card. Um, I I can't pronounce this next one. You take this one. It's Krik? So, Kirik? What is it? This next one is uh, Kirik, son of Yogmoth. There we go. Uh, four, Phyrexian Black, Phyrexian Black, Phyrexian Black. Um, so seven mana or four mana and six life. Uh, sorry, two, two legendary creature horror minion with lifelink. For each black... Pip, in a cost, you may pay two life rather than pay that mana, and whenever you cast a black spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on Kirik, son of Yogmoth. Also a good card. Yeah. This one's really fun to play. The I love Phyrexian, man. I hope... It's obviously going to come back because there's, like, the confrontation with the Phyrexians coming, and mm-hmm. there's Praetors and everything now, and I think we got some Phyrexian mana recently in something, didn't we? Tamiya. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so it is going to come back. I... I really, really like the Phyrexian mana option. It, it lets you do so much more in in commander with a bigger life total, like we've said. Absolutely. Uh, you also have Lazav Demir Mastermind. Double blue, double black, 3-3 three, three shapeshifter, hexproof. Whenever a creature is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, you can have Lazav become a copy of that card, except its name is Lazav Demir Mastermind. It's legendary in addition to its other types, and it has hexproof and this ability. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, this next one is kind of a pet card that I've been waiting or trying to find a deck for it. It's really cool and I finally card. found it. Um, this is Mind Leech Mass. Five blue, double black for a 6-6 six, six horror with Trample. Whenever Mind Leech Mass deals combat damage to a player, you may look at that player's hand. If you do, you may play a non-land card in it without paying its mana cost. That could be real problematic. Absolutely. That's, uh, that's a cool pet card. Nice. I like that. Yeah, it's, that's a nice uh, Thoracle combo you got there. Mind if I just uh, steal that real quick? Thanks. At least it's non-land, so you can't take my lands from me, but that's that's still a rough yeah. ability. And it, with it having trample and it not being legendary, so you can possibly like make a second with like reflections. Mm-hmm. That's good. And it'll have um, menace as well. True. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's hard. That's hard to deal with. <laughs> you also have Mirko Vosk, Mind Drinker. Three, Mind Freak. Uh, three, one blue, one black for a two, four vampire. Flying, when Murkovosk Mind Drinker deals combat damage to a player, that player reveals cards from the top of his or her library until he or she reveals four lands, then puts those cards into, a gra- into their graveyard. That's really, really good, and also a fun alternative commander for this deck. Yep. Milling, milling four lands is rough. Mm-hmm. It's really, really rough. It really hurts. I've run like 30 lands in some decks. It hurts. I don't have enough. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um... Next up is Moth Dust Changeling, single blue for a 1 1 shapeshifter. It's got Changeling, and you can tap an untapped creature you control and give it flying until end of turn. That's cool. Yeah. Solid Changeling. I love the Changeling, Trev. Absolutely. Nemesis of Reason. 3 1 blue, 1 black for a 3 7 Leviathan Horror. Whenever a Nemesis of Reason attacks, defending player mills 10 cards. Yeah. 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 Words describing it fail, pages relating it shrivel. Tales recounting it end. That's yeah. That's pretty baller flavor yeah. text. Yeah. Um, 
Then we've got Night Howler, one double black for an enchantment creature horror, uh, zero zero. It's got Bestow for two and double black. Uh, Night Howler and enchanted creature each get plus X plus X, where X is the number of creature cards in all graveyards. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. For three mana, two, and it being horror, awesome inclusion. Oh, yeah, the next card. Yeah. Awesome include <laughs> in the deck. I'll let you take the next one. I can't, I can't even <laughs> blaspheme myself with it. <laughs> So the next one is uh, it's another transmute target. Um, opposition agent for two and a black. It's a uh, 3-2 rogue with flash. You're, you control your opponents while they're searching their libraries, and while an opponent is searching their library, they exile each card they find. You may play those cards for as long as they remain exiled, and you spend mana as over mana of any color to cast them. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's fair and balanced. It's a lot. It's uh, it's a lot. The next one can go really silly. Like it's just good on its own in that in this deck, but with mm-hmm. like some of your things, like that Night Howler, like that uh, what was the one, Consuming Aberration, those kind of things. Yeah. Uh, it can be a game ending just to have it hit the board. Uh, it's Phoenix God of Deception, three one blue one black legendary enchantment creature God, a four seven indestructible. As long as your devotion to blue and black is less than seven, it's not a creature. And creatures you control have tap. Target player puts the top X cards of his or her library into the graveyard where X is that creature's toughness. If you have a consuming aberration out and you've milled each of us 25, that's a, a tap for 75. Mm-hmm. It's, it, that ends the game for someone. It's rough. Yeah. <laughs> next yeah. one's pretty cool, too. Uh, next one, yeah. Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. Three in the blue for legendary human rogue. Uh, 3-1, you may have Sakashima of a Thousand Faces enter the battlefield as a copy of another creature you control, except it has Sakashima's other abilities. And the legend rule doesn't apply to permanents you control. Yeah. Such a good... Yeah. It has partner, but that's not for this deck. Yeah. Yeah, doesn't matter. I like that. You've got Sewer Nemesis as well. Three and a black for a star star. As it enters, choose a player. It's a horror. Uh, it's power and toughness are each equal to the number of cards in the chosen player's graveyard. Great. Whenever the chosen player casts a spell, the player mills a card. That's funny. That's annoying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Sludge Monster, three double blue for a 5-5 five, five horror. Whenever Sludge Monster, Monster enters the battlefield or attacks, put a slam counter on up to one other target creature. And non-horror creatures with slam counters on them lose all abilities and have base power and toughness 2-2. Two, two. It's rough. Yeah. It's good horror. We've got Spark Double as well, three and a blue. Uh, you can have Spark Double enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature or planeswalker you control. Except it enters with an additional 1-1 one, one on it. Or if it's a Planeswalker, an additional loyalty. And if they're legendary, they're not legendary. I love Spark Double. Yeah. Another card I think needs a reprint. It's too good to be a $12 card. Like, like yeah, it's good, it's powerful, but it, it just goes in so many decks, right? Having two of your commanders is great. Yeah. That's another cool one. Yeah, the next one, uh, Tidewater Minion. It's three double blue for a 4-4 elemental with Defender. Um, you can tap four and have it lose Defender. Until end of turn, or you can tap it to untap target permanent. Yeah. Untap shenanigans are always a good time. Yeah. You have one of my favorite cards printed of the last year. It's it's the slug boy himself, Toxrill the Corrosive. One of the easiest cards to make people angry with. It's five double yep. black for a legendary slug horror. Seven seven. Seven seven and seven. Mono black is good. Beginning of each end step, not just your end step, each. You put a slime counter on each creature you don't control. That's a lot, yep. Creatures you don't control get minus one, minus one for each slime counter on them. With the horror as well that immediately at the first end step turns everything into two twos with no abilities. Mm-hmm. And whenever a creature you don't control with a slime counter and it dies, you create a 1-1 one, one black slug creature token horror, which is awesome. And, because that's not enough on a card, one blue, one black sack of slug draw card. This is a draw engine. This is board wipe. This is rough control. It's creature token generation. This is such a good card. Yeah, this is everything I that you want it to be. I love this card. It's one of my favorite salt cards in all of Magic. <laughs> I was also unaware it's twenty one dollars right now. Yeah, it's it's up there. Yikes! Oh, I love. Um, I have to take this one too. I'm sorry. Oh, absolutely. It's the Uchalan. It's like oh, I love it. Oh, the Uchalan three and a black for a crab ooze horror. <laughs> Just hilarious tribes. Star four. Its power is equal to the number of crabs, ooze, and or horrors you control. Awesome. At the beginning of your end step, exile up to one target creature card from an opponent's graveyard. If you do, create a token that's a copy of Uchalan. Again, I love it. I love token generation. 
I love like the Tarmogoyf like effect, but for your crabs, oozes, and horrors. I just I love this card. This is very cool. Yeah. Crab ooze horror. <laughs> um then we've got Umbris Fear Mantle. Uh three blue and a black for a one one nightmare horror. Uh gets plus one plus one for each card your opponents own in exile. Uh whenever Umbris or another nightmare or horror enters the battlefield under your control. Uh, target pl- uh, opponent exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile a land card. Yeah, I built this one, and it's one of my least least enjoyed to play against decks I've seen. Yeah, that's yeah, that's fair. Yeah, again, another alternative commander that you could use for this deck. Umbris is a monster commander. Yeah, it's yeah, really, absolutely. It's really fun to target at one person. Try get all of their lands into exile, then you play Oblivion So or get all their lands from exile. It's a great time. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a great time. You. you have to believe me. <laughs> no, um, Umbris is a really, really cool inclusion in this. It's another card that I think needs a... Because it was one of the set booster exclusive cards. So it's kind of hard to find. Yeah. It also becomes monster as well. Like, if you just have, like, a Tormod's Crypt in this deck, this, like, can possibly come down as, like, a 200-200. Yep. Yeah, it's rough. Yep. It's, yeah, it, it, it's a monster card. You also have Universal mm-hmm. Automaton, which is just simple shapeshifter changeling. One mana artifact, one one creature. Yeah. Okay. I didn't read this next one. You take it. <laughs> uh, so the the final creature is uh, Zelix Sanity Flayer, two and a blue for a two three legendary horror. Uh, it's got Hive Mind. Whenever a player mills one or more creature cards, you create a one one black horror creature token. Uh, you can tap one and tap a tap target player mill three cards, and you can choose a background. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, but that's. That's the deck. There is something that I realized that I forgot to put in. Um, uh, so when I was drafting this one up, I had Illusionist Bracers in here. Good card. Because that's why I had Tidewater Minion. Because Illusionist Bracers, Tidewater Minion, and Codex Shredder is infinite mill. Yeah. Yeah. Untap two permanents mm. is really good. Yeah. But yeah, that's. Uh, I've just sent a list off to see if they have a Zealot Sanity Flare at my LGS because I will be building that <laughs> card. Nice. That's super cool. Whenever a player mills one or more creature cards, you create a one. That's awesome. That I'm for sure building that card. Perfect. We can have horrors versus horrors. Yeah, we can just gang, gang, bang the table. It's it would be bad. <laughs> yeah. I I love I love playing like two tribal decks at the table. It especially it's so fun if it like comes down. It's you've probably seen it more commonly in like an elf deck kind of thing. But it, it's mm-hmm. it's just a nice tribal synergy when you've both picked the same tribe. You guys kind of team up on the rest of the table because it's you know it's. <laughs> I, I would just sit here and high five slot the whole game. So I'd be like horror brothers, and then they'd Absolutely. be like, they'd be like, yeah, why aren't you targeting him? I'd be like, because he's playing horrors too. We'll hash horror it. Out. We'll, we'll horrifically hash it out at the end. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get to uh, we'll get to that later. I'm not overlooking at the Zelix card. This is just crazy. This is just yeah. a really good card. Yeah. yeah, this was another one that was in the precon. Yeah, that's a really good card. That I, I really the more that I look at it, the more I like the choose a background mechanic a lot. Mm-hmm. especially because they'll be able to expand it so much later on. Oh, absolutely. But I just, I built a lot of the choose a background commanders. I I thought they were really fun. I've always yeah. liked partner and I've said that many times. Like I bought, or I bought and built five Wilson decks. Like I could do a whole week of Wilson. I could do Wilson week and give everyone five episodes for the week. If everyone wants to hear how I built Wilson five ways. Yeah. yeah. I guess I should also ask everyone else if they want to record five, five of the same commander. Little little, ins- little inside that. baseball, but no, yeah, like uh, we we were able to rip through this deck. I'm not over this Zelix yeah. card. <laughs> this might be next week's episode. Perfect. Whenever they mill one or more creature cards, you create a one one black horror creature token. That's wicked. No. I love it. Yeah. I'm in I'm in love with that card. Yeah, no, I think this is a really cool deck. I like that uh, you have so many alternative commanders all at the same casting cost, which I think is like really really interesting too. You've got multiple th- uh, five mana. Uh, Demir commander options for this deck that would all function well. They would all be a fun one, but I I just like the I like the commander you chose for it. It it just makes every time you mill so much more threatening because like I know how I build and in my opinion I build really strong and good decks. Mm-hmm. So I don't want any of that in the graveyard for you to take. No. Yeah, I don't want a single one of those cards accessible. Like especially like. If I'm playing something like Kara Metro, my whole deck is creatures, right? There's no instants, there's no sorceries. You're going to get only permanent cards or maybe my uh, Primal Surge, right? Yeah. 
I just built uh, I just built Giada, and that's a deck that gets up and running a little slow. It's mono white angels, and the threat of being smashed and having like losing my Avacyn on like turn three or turn four because you can ramp this out fast is like it's a rough it's a rough commander option. Yeah, I, this is I really like it. I was really really excited when they announced this one, um, for exactly that reason. Yeah, because it's just like I said, I I know how I build. And I don't want anyone to touch my cards. I don't want anyone to be able to to take any of my good stuff because that's what I jam my decks packed with. Like the same thing. Zach builds so many creatures into decks and like so many things that are good into the graveyard. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you're just taking from his graveyard, this is heresy to Zach. <laughs> yeah, I was I was actually thinking that it, it was probably better that he wasn't here this week. Yeah, he, think, Zach would be vomiting would like on the microphone. I'd have to I'd have to cut all the vomiting sounds of him. <laughs> no this is a, a really really cool deck like you guys should definitely check it out in the show notes as well the it, it's also fairly budget like considering like uh it's it, when you look at the architect list it's 525 but then like i said before a lot of those creatures are just huge huge cost like umbris is 20 dollars toxrill is 20 dollars right like yeah, when, when, you, when you're 30 dollars which one sorry uh Bruvac. Yeah, exactly. So like some of those, if you just if you just take out some of those, you can replace them easily with those. Like you're uh, the same thing. You don't need a fierce guardianship in the deck. Yeah. You don't need a vamp tutor in the deck. They're nice to have, right? But like you could you could slim this down to a, a pretty reasonable budget deck, like pretty quickly and stuff. Like even your land base is like it's got like some shocks in it and everything like that. You, you yeah. don't you don't need ten twenty dollars. Like this is just a cool. You don't need an herb work. I love herb work though. <laughs> But that's what I mean. Like it's it, it's fairly budget. Like you could make and also Ristic Study at thirty dollars too. You could make a, like a, a pretty workable version of this for around one or two hundred dollars. I would say like I you could you could shave two or three hundred dollars off this by taking out ten cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's kind of that's kind of what I'm going to be working on for the next couple of days, making a like hundred hundred and fifty dollar version of this list. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Once once that's done, it'll also be up in the show notes. But yeah, like there's there's a lot of really really cool things in here. There's there's just cool. I like how you build and stuff, right? It's very different than me. Like the, we we just did my Mirren deck last week, right? And I put yeah. an instant in like some of the arguably best colors for it. Like there's yeah. an instant and maybe a sorcery. If that, like I, I, I build, I build silly when I build travel stuff. So it's just always fun to see like the decks that you're making and stuff. This is a really, really cool one. And I'm glad that you love this commander outright. I'm, I'm obsessed with Zelix. Such a cool card. Uh, what background would you put with that? I don't even know. I might build five Zelix. It's just so annoying. Yep. The uh, I might make it like honestly, like the I really really like Agent of Shadow Thieves. I think that's such a good background. Mm-hmm. But I also just there's so many backgrounds that I really like. Giants belt Zelix would be hilarious. Yeah. So you could just like ramp to these huge huge mill and draw. No, I <laughs> uh, I just really like it. It does suck that it's a commander deck exclusive card so i can't probably just willy-nilly buy five of them but, yeah but i want to so bad yeah i don't know have you yeah. built anything with the backgrounds or no uh, i'm working on uh jahira yeah. right now um it's gonna it's tokens it's jahira with inspiring leader that's a good one um and it focuses on trying to get opalescence out yeah that's so fun. that you can have uh all your tokens get plus four plus four yeah it's pretty good I like that. Um, I uh, my Jahira is with the bombardment one. The I can't even remember the name. Where all your tokens have, or your commander has, tap one, sack an artifact or creature, deals one damage to target creature. It's all about just hurling tokens at people's face. Yeah, yeah. I I really liked it. Inspiring leader is a really really cool one. I did it for the uh, what's the what's the treasure bears Halson? Yes. Yeah. Whatever, whatever the treasure bears is, that's what I did with inspiring leader. Because just yes, be, being able to pay one to turn treasure tokens into six six bears is nuts. Those yeah. are those are problematic bears for sure. Oh, absolutely, man! I got so many decks to do for everyone. I'll I'll wrap it up because I'm ranting and stuff. But yeah, I really really think this is a cool deck. Like, uh, I'd love to know what else you guys would have put in here and stuff. Would you have gone more of this control route? Would you have loaded it up with horrors, just hor- as many horrors as the brain could imagine? What would you guys have done? Let us know. Okay. And again, thank you so much for listening and making it to the end. Um, uh, let me hit my music I guess uh, you can find all our content at into the 99.com again always a, a, a 
pleasure to have you guys get through the episode. I forgot to mention it early, but uh, check out Abyss Proxy Shop. Uh, we have a promo code IT99. They do great proxies if any of these are going to be expensive. Get out, support your LGS, and buy some of these cards to to make decks like that. Like always, always be buying cards and stuff. Proxy the expensive stuff that's out of your budget, but but get in there, make decks, have fun, and yeah, this is just a great great deck overall. I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing it when we play next. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And uh, oh yeah, also if you see us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, leave us a rating, five star review would be great. Uh, obviously leave what you think but if you think we do a good job leave us a review it's definitely always nice to hear what people think and it helps us get noticed a lot more which is honestly the best way you can support us is just by liking and sharing the content so thank you again so much for everyone who listens and have a great weekend week i guess this comes out monday (laughs) bye everyone see ya